In the last video, we saw how to take a coefficient matrix um, and put it into what I called row echelon form. And today we're going to learn a, a bit about what's called reduced row echelon form, or RREF. It's the, um, the same as what you saw, but taken further to arrive at um, exact solutions. So we don't need to do back substitution. Um, so if we have a matrix, What I had in the last video was a matrix that had ones um, along the diagonal with zeros below them. That's messy. And then I just had num random numbers here. I don't remember what they were. I'm just going to say. And I had a final column as well of my solutions, one, two, three. And I was able to say, oh, x, x3 equals 3. So I'll say, because x3 equals 3, I'll plug that in for this, and then I'll solve x2. Then I can plug that in for these two and solve for x1. Um, so with the RREF, we go one step past this, so we don't have to do all that back substitution. Um, and the three basic rules for RREF are these. Um, if a row has non-zero entries, then the first non-zero entry is 1. You can see that that's true here. Um, all these rows have non-zero entries, so the first one of each of them is a 1. Um, and this, but the second one is one that's different. If a column has a leading 1, all other entries in that column are 0. So this column has a leading 1, and the other entries are 0. But this column, that's not the case. Um, so f to make this the RREF, this would have to be 0 as well. And these would have to be 0 as well. And just to reinforce this idea um, of a staircase, which is where the word echelon comes, for, comes from, by the way, um, if a row has a leading 1, then each row above it has a leading 1 further to the left. That's just saying we got a 1. We can't have any 1s below it. The 1s have to be further to the right. For this one, the 1s have to be further to the left. Um, so this is what like the ideal RREF will look like. It's actually called the identity matrix, where we have a, a like a square. There's ones on this diagonal and zeros everywhere else. But there are other ways that the RREF can look like that'll still um, fulfill these rules. Say I have one that's one, two, zero, five. So I'll have zero, zero, one, two. This is also an RREF. It still um, contains all the same rules. We got leading ones. Ones are the only numbers in their column. And uh, the leading one above it is further to the left. This makes a staircase like that. So the importance of the RREF is so we can easily look at it and find the answers. In this case, the answers are right in front of us. x3 equals 3, x2 equals 2, x1 equals 1. Here. Uh, if that's x1, x2, x3, x3 equals 2. And now we have um, two variables going to equal this 5. That's x1 plus 2x2 equals 5. So what do we do in a case like this when we have other numbers here that we can't really get rid of um, but are still important? Um, in our solutions, it would look something like x1 equals 5 minus 2x2, x3 equals 2. So what does x2 equal? We'll just say x2 equals a constant t. And because x2 equals t, we'll say we'll put that one right here. So that's what our solution set will look, will look like. And this is actually a completed solution um, where t can be any number. And there are actually infinitely many solutions to this equation um, because you can just substitute any number in for t. Um, here are a couple more examples of what an RREF could look like.
Notice in this one we have a row all of zeros. That's fine. We can do that. We still have this staircase pattern. Ones are the only ones in the columns. And each row begins with a one. Here's another one. This, there's all these constant numbers, and it may not look like an R or EF, but we still have this staircase pattern. Ones are the only ones in the columns, and it's a leading one. Um, for this case, we would just assign uh, variables to these numbers. We would say T, S, R, whatever variables you like, in the same way that we did for that. Um, but when we are able to reduce a matrix down into a form like this, it makes getting the answers very easy. They're just right in front of us. Um, so let's also talk a bit about rank. So the, the definition of rank, the easiest definition that we can just look at from here, is um, the number of non-zero rows in the RREF. Um, so for here, how many non-zero rows are there? There's three. So we would say that this matrix has a rank of three. Here, it has a rank of two. This one has a rank of three, because there's one completely zero row. Sorry, three, I can't count. This one has a rank of two. So the rank of a matrix um, is often tied to how many solutions it has. Um, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say it's often tied. The rank of the matrix is tied to how many solutions it has. It doesn't tell you a whole lot, and you can't really know the, ma the, the rank until you get it into the R or EF form. Um, but you'll notice if we have an M by N matrix, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. Um, okay, if the rank is equal to M, the system has at least one solution. Does that make sense? So if every row has a non-zero entry, then the system must have at least one solution. I think that makes sense. Um, if the rank is equal to N, the number of columns, then the system has at most one solution. Uh, I don't have any examples where the rank is more than N. So let's see what that would look like. Here's a four by two matrix where the rank is one. There's only one non-zero row. Um, yeah, we can't tell a whole lot about that. So that's why there's no rule for when the rank is more than n. Um, but when the rank is less than n, the system either has infinitely many um, or zero solutions. So when the rank is less than n, that's when you have a case like this, when you have free variables there or here. Um, you're going to have free variables. That's how you know you have either infinitely many solutions or in some cases there are no solutions because the system is inconsistent. Um, let me just write those rules down. So that's rank. Rank is tied to the RREF, which is an easy way um, to be able to tell your sol the solutions of a linear system. Um, so that's all we have for this lesson. Check out the next video for more information on linear algebra. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math-related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. 
Just click this link right here.